sort of kind of a joke earlier this year about you know how long Tevin's been with the program and, and you've been with him. And can you put into words just how his offensive game has just suddenly taken off this year, uh, which has obviously added more to his overall game? No, we're not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> we just kind of leave well enough alone on that deal. But no, he's such a great kid, such a great player. People are seeing the real Tevin Tucker right now. He just has grinded out his whole career. And when he stopped worrying about his batting average, like we talked about, that's when he started collecting hits. And, and now he's uh, now he's the guy who wants to see come up to the plate regardless of the situation. That's usually how it works. Though. You showed up. Uh, that, that's usually how it works, though, right? I mean, when you stop putting so much pressure on yourself to, you know, whether it's you know, take home runs or hit for average, and you stop worrying about it, that's usually when it. Yeah, you know, we talked to... before the season, and, and I told Tim, I was like, man, we don't need you to get hits. We need you to help run this offense. You're like a point guard on a basketball team. You don't have to score points in order to help your team win the game. Yeah. So just leave the situation uh, better after you hit than it was before you hit. If that means moving a guy up, if that means taking a walk, he's um, willing to do whatever it takes. And, and when you show that willingness for the team, you get rewarded for it. And he's getting rewarded for it. And a huge difference in our season was when we put, moved JJ up to the a leadoff spot to hit behind Tuck. And then Tuck's mentality, I'm speaking for him now, but I know he's probably going to say this because I've heard him say it. He said, my job as a hitter is to get JJ to the plate. And when you take on that team type of mentality, you get rewarded for your efforts, and that's what's happening now. So Kevin, that's worked obviously really well for this team. Past couple games, you had to hit in the leadoff spot as y'all were picking up with JJ. That change your mentality, your approach, any what you're trying to do? Uh, I wouldn't say so, no, sir. I'm still just trying to get on and do what I can for the team. If I can get on, that just helps for the team. So anybody can get on, walk, hit, uh, hit by pitch, bunt, anything. So it, it didn't really change anything. I'm just trying to pass it, have a good AB and pass it to the next guy. Tevin, you made a couple of really good plays in the infield this afternoon. Uh, was it any adjustment playing on grass as opposed to the turf back at the Mon? Uh, I mean, the mine at home plays fast, but playing at MLB Park, uh, the field is, is perfect. So it wasn't really that too much of an adjustment, a uh, flat field, and you get good hops. So just felt like a, a big league out there, just out there playing. So I'm just kind of curious. I mean, throughout your career, did you look at your numbers before? You look at them now. Are you surprised by the, just the output you're, you're getting now? Um, I mean, I don't look at the numbers, but I mean, they're there. But like my mom said, I was just in my own way, really. So I just got to trust the process. And what's happening now, like I said, I'm just trying to have good ABs, but it's not shocking to me. I mean, I work hard, so yeah. it's just a matter of time, so. How, how are you in your own way? Like, uh, just mentally, like in my head, you know, yeah. baseball is a, a tough sport. So just dwelling on little things and just letting it go. Just controlling what you can control. Do you feel like you're now getting the recognition for the type of season you're having and what you're doing for this team, or you still maybe kind of feel underrated at all? Uh, I mean, really, you not even that, care about yeah, it. Yeah, that doesn't really matter to me. I just want to win and get another region to Morgantown, honestly, and go further than that. Is your last time playing at, at PNC Park as a Mountaineer? I'm curious, at what point, whether it was warming up or during batting practice, did you kind of look around and, and soak in the moment? Um, to be honest, I kind of really never really looked around and really soaked it in, really. It was just, Winning the game, honestly. I mean, it's a big league part, but at the end of the day, you got to win the game. That's all that matters. Randy, this team is rarely panicked when it's falling behind, when it's had a bad inning or two. Upperclassman leadership, I, I know you've said it's some of it, but it seems like that spread everywhere. You started rallies, different spots in the order, different pitchers have come in and produced for you. Is that a contagious kind of thing? Yeah, you know. Every team seems to take on the personality of the head coach, and I don't panic. You know, I never panic. When we gave up the, the Little League Grand Slam at Penn State, I just, I didn't get mad at anybody. 
you know, if I get mad at them and start yelling at people, it, nobody responds to that. So uh, between that and these older guys that have a calming effect on everybody else, that that shows up when you get down four to nothing in the third inning here and they're able to come back and win the game nine to four. It's just a calming effect. Nobody ever panics, that's one of my rules. And I think our players know that I believe in them. Uh, we probably use more pitchers than anybody in the history of college baseball. And we do that because I believe in all of them. And I want to give all of them an opportunity to pitch in big moments. And sometimes guys are out there to get one guy out. No short went out there to get two guys out. Uh, tonight, Traxel went out to get three guys out. You know, we if everybody knows they have a role on the team, then it makes the team play better. And, you know, from number one through number nine in the lineup, everybody, everybody helped us win that game. So that's the sign of a good team when, when JJ goes out and you can produce up and down the lineup. Coach, this is kind of our first time to talk to you since that Oklahoma State series. With, with JJ, is uh, yeah, I saw the release on, you know, no breaks or no fractures, so that's good news. But any kind of, like, you know, timetable that, that you're looking at, uh, is he able to, like, rip a bat or, you know? What? Yeah, he's kind of day-to-day. -day. Yeah. It's going to be a, a pain tolerance situation. And, and he's a tough kid now. I don't know if you saw the video, but he was kind of rolling around like a piece of bacon in a frying pan there for a little while. And we were worried about it. Thought maybe we would have lost him for the season, but uh, he, he's a tough, tough kid and willing to do what it takes. And he was actually mad that I brought Traxel in the game tonight. He wanted to pitch the ninth inning. So that's just the kind of kid, the kind of competitor he is. And, and the team rallies around that, even if he's not in the lineup. He probably wants to play now, I imagine, right? I mean, Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Every, everybody in uniform does, but uh, we're going to be smart with it. He's too talented of a kid to, to go out there and, and rush him back in before he's ready. And it's a shame he didn't get to play at the PNC. He's a Pittsburgh kid, you know, and play against Pitt. But he'll, he'll have another opportunity, and, and uh, we want to make sure when he comes back, he's ready to produce like he was before he went down. So was was there any thought though, maybe? <clears throat> trying to get him in there because he's a Pittsburgh product or just not ready yet? No, he, he's ready to uh, pitch run. Is the other, he, that's what he's limited to right now. And uh, if, if needed, he would have come in. But it doesn't matter to me if he's from Pittsburgh or Sheboygan, Wisconsin. You know, we're trying to win the game. Now, I know that at his old school tracks, would pitch on Fridays and then come in to close on Sundays. What went into bringing him into the game tonight? You know, his last three outings in the league haven't been great, and I thought we need to get him back on track and get him some confidence and get him an inning where he gets some swings and misses and throws a zero on the board because it, uh, you know, when you when you have a couple bad outings, it's human nature is that you know you you second guess yourself and your pitches. And we we need to get him back on track for us to have uh, finished this conference season pretty well. Tracks needs to win games for us, so. And he's, you know, he could throw, you know, 150 pitches a game if he needed to. So uh, this was his bullpen day. Anyhow, he would have thrown like that in the bullpen had it not been in the game. But I thought it was important for him to uh, get out there and, and get some outs, give him some confidence going into this weekend. How would you evaluate, evaluate uh, Carson's first collegiate start, and what gave you the confidence from his first, or his, his previous relief outings to, to give him the start? You know, Carson's not all that easy to hit normally. He's a little bit high strung. I was a little bit worried about him in the atmosphere and getting caught up in that. And, you know, we've rotated who starts these midweek games uh, between those first three pitchers that threw tonight. Uh, Carson has started, Van Kempen has started, Siegel has started. We're trying to find a guy. When we've had great years here, we've had a guy that went out and won all the midweek games. You know, when we had Nick Snyder, he pitched every Tuesday. We won all those games. Going back to Isaiah Kearns. Did you play with Kearns? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> but Kearns, he, was, he beat Pitt two or three times one year. We, we need to have a guy, a fourth starter, that can win a game. And when you get in the conference tournament and regional format, 
the four starters, usually the guy on the mound on championship day. So we're trying to trying to rotate those guys to see who can step up and and get the ball uh, going down the stretch. Tim, I'm just kind of curious. I mean, other than you and Coach Mazie, I mean, you, you're the last one kind of still standing from the 2019 uh, NCAA year. Uh, is there, you know, having gone through that year, the wins, the losses, can you compare that feeling to anything that, that you guys are accomplishing so far this year? I mean, obviously it's, you know, kind of middle of the season, but is there any comparison at all from that year to the way you guys are going this year? Uh, I would say like the team camaraderie, like everybody is for each other. Uh, we have a lot of fun, just like that team did uh, my freshman year. But most important thing, like you said, just going out, just winning every game. Like you said, this is the biggest game of the year. The game that you're playing is our next game, I guess, Friday will be the biggest game of the year. So just going out there competing and winning every game. But I see some similarities for sure. Randy, your team's 5-0 in the ballpark. Uh, what's it mean, I guess, to the program to continue to win in this place? And then also, you guys have done it different ways kind of every time you've been here. How do you continue to get it done in this venue with the different atmosphere and things you mentioned? I, I don't know that I knew that. It would be cool if we would move the TCU series up here. <laughs> that, that would be advantage Mountaineers. But you know, we have done it different ways. This is the probably the most runs we've scored. Most of the games we've played up here haven't been terribly offensive. There's been some late innings. I think we've walked off Penn State here one year. I think the pit game was 11 innings last year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so. Yeah, we play with confidence here. And I tell the guys, the coolest thing to me is Tuck got to stand in the same batter's box that Mike Trout gets to stand in. And Vladimir Guerrero uh, Jr. gets to stand in. You get to share a batter's box with the Hall of Fame big leaguers. And the pitchers that pitch tonight got to put their foot on the same rubber as Mariano Rivera did at some point. That's just for a kid, that's a pretty good feeling. So I think our guys enjoy playing here for, for that reason. We always have a good crowd here, except for the one year the Pens and the Caps were playing game seven the same night. Uh, we played here that hurt the crowd some, but, uh, and it helps us because the Big 12 tournament's in a big league stadium and, and playing in this stadium helps us prepare for that because you, know, you can get in Walla La Land a little bit for new kids in the program, so there's, this is a win, win, win all around for us to play here. This is for both of you guys. Tevin, you talked about the team camaraderie. On a team that has 15 freshmen and a few more transfers, you know, more than half the team is new players. What can you say about the camaraderie building up that fast when you've got so many new faces in the locker room? Uh, I think them coming in for Summer Bridge kind of helped just kind of get them used to the campus. And then once you started fall, it was just kind of like getting to know each other. And then slowly and surely it just got a team bond that is just one of a kind. We have so much fun in practice and I mean, we have a lot of freshmen and a lot of transfers, but everybody feel like they're the same. So everybody's just out there going to have fun. So I think that makes it easier for them to adjust. Good time for one more question. Kevin, uh, you know, you're talking earlier about, you know, stay focused and not really looking at the numbers. Uh, I'm just kind of curious. I mean, this is really kind of the first time in your career that you've been on this kind of role. So how do you handle you know, not, I mean, it's easy not to look at the numbers when things are, you know, but when it's really going good, how is it, does it change anything? I mean, how hard will it be, you know, not to look at, you know, how well you do? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it changed anything. I mean, I know where I came from, so I know I just got to keep going every day. I haven't done anything, honestly, so I just got to keep working hard, keep trusting, and just keep believing in myself and my team.